Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can approximate the tide using the rule of twelfths. Now, it's only going to work when your tidal curve looks something like this. It's a typical semi-diurnal tide with high waters and low waters along the y-axis and then time along the x-axis. Obviously, we've got high water time here. Now, the characteristic of these tides is that there's about 12 hours between subsequent high waters. So you've got two tides per day, around six hours between high water and low water. When you look at the curve itself, it looks very similar to the mathematical sine curve. This is your typical sine curve with just y equals sine of x, with the y-axis obviously here and the x-axis obviously along here. Now, to plot one of these, you would need a calculator because for every single little point along, you're going to be plotting straight along and you're going to have to do the sum of sine x. But to get an approximation, we can just split it into 12. First along the y-axis where we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 below the x-axis, obviously going from the very bottom of the curve right to the very top of the curve. We can also split it the same the other direction, giving us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this segment where the y is positive and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this section where the y is negative. And this is why it's called the rule of 12th. We've literally overlaid a 12 by 12 grid over our sine curve. And the magic really happens when we start to approximate the curve. If we take these lines along the x-axis and we look for a point that's close to the curve on each of the boxes, I'm just going to go and put these dots on roughly on the closest point for each of the boxes all the way along the curve. Might not be completely the closest point, but you're going to see why I've chosen these points in just a second. Right, if we now look at what the divisions on the y-axis are, the first one is here and we've got three blocks. The next one is here and we've got the difference of two blocks. And the final one is up the top where we've got the difference of one block. And it's the same coming back down again. We've got that one block, then two blocks, then three blocks. So we've got the three block difference, the two block difference, and finally the one block difference. And what this has done is it's split it all up very easily so that we can remember and create a very rough approximation of the sine curve. And what's more, we can apply this exact same principle to a tidal curve when it looks like a sine curve. The only difference is it's been shifted along a little bit and now we've got different labels for our axis. So on this one, we've got the height of tide and on this one, we've got the time. So obviously we've got our high water height here, our low water height down here. And in the middle, we've got the time of high water. Then we've got high water plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, plus six. Similar the other way, minus one, minus two, and so on. Now, obviously, the tide isn't exactly six hours, but we'll get to that bit in a minute. Anyway, so the rule of 12 says in the first hour after high water, the tide is going to drop approximately one twelfth of the way it's going to drop. In the following hour, it's going to drop two twelfths, then three twelfths, then three twelfths again, two twelfths and one twelfth. Similar if we go before high water, so an hour before high water, it's still got roughly one twelfth to rise. Another two twelfths down, then halfway, and then we've got a three, two, and a one. And plotting those together, we've got our very rough approximation of the tidal curve. Now, let's say we're in an area where we've got a high water height of 2.2 meters and a low water height of 1.0 meters. We need to work out what each of these blocks is going to give us. So we just do the 2.2 minus 1.0, giving us a 1.2 meter change in total. Remember, we had 12 blocks, so we can just divide that by 12, giving us 0.1 meters for each block. So we know that each of these blocks is going to be a 0.1 of a meter drop as it's going all the way down. And we can use that knowledge to get a rough figure of what the tide is going to be each hour. So obviously at high water, we knew it was going to be 2.2 meters. One hour after high water, look, we've had the drop of one. So we would just take that one block away, take the 0.1, so it's 2.1 meters. Two hours after, 
we dropped another two blocks down from the previous one. So we take off another 0.2, giving us 1.9 meters. Similar in the middle, so we take off another three blocks, giving us 1.6 meters. The next hour, again, another drop of 0.3, giving us 1.3 meters. Next hour, drop of two again, so that gives us 1.1 meters. And then down here, we're 1.0 meters. So there you have it, the rule of twelfths giving you a very rough approximation of the tide. Of course, it is only a rough approximation. If you need precise navigation, so if you're very close to the seabed, if you're very tight on tide or something like that, you're going to have to use the tidal curves. Similar if you're navigating a large vessel or something, obviously this isn't a precise way of doing it. But if you're on a small boat, maybe you just want to know roughly when the tide's going to be high enough to row out in your dinghy to your mooring, or if you're doing a bit of surfing or something like that, this can give you a plenty close enough approximation of what the tide is going to be. Again, I've written all this up, so it's over on my website if you want further detail and other diagrams and things like that. If you've got any further questions about this or about anything else in general to do with maritime navigation, leave them down in the comments below, or even better, come and join us in the community where you can talk to me directly and I can answer any questions you've got and we can come up with new topics for videos and all that kind of thing. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful and until next time, goodbye.